tell them you ought to know by now God has a word for you it is the gospel record of John chapter 19 and when you have navigated your way to the 19th chapter of John I would that you would locate the 30th verse it is John's gospel chapter 19 beginning at verse 30 when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost thank you you may be seated when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar he said it is finished I have a declaration from God that is to be an affirmation from you I reason with you for just a few moments I'm done Tell somebody, I'm done. <laughs> the year of our Lord, 19 and 77. Was supposed to be the year of my graduation from <laughs> Hofstra University. And the operative word in that sentence is, supposed to be. For a few years prior, in, the, in the all around 19 and 74, I was engaged in a course that I could not master. And an uninformed, Tracy, an uninformed student informed me that I had options. That besides passing or failing Roundtree, I, can, I had an option. I could choose to take an incomplete. But something in my 19-year-old mind said, isn't incomplete the same thing as failing? Because if you don't finish, you fail. I'm going to let that sink in for a little while. I'll try it one more time. If you don't finish, you fail. I then am compelled by this sixth saying of Jesus while hanging on Calvary's cross. Because now I've discovered something that maybe might bless you. And that is God in the flesh expressing the fact that he's done with being the sin of mankind. Yes, sir. That he is through yes. with suffering 
for something he didn't do. More importantly, as my minutes fleet from me and I head towards conclusion, what he speaks, Wendy, is prophetic, Gail. It is unbelievably prophetic because he says it is finished before he dies. So it wasn't finished when he died. It was finished before. Before he died. need somebody to know that it doesn't have to be finished when it's over. It's finished when you say so. For thou shall decree a thing. I wish I had a believer here tell somebody neighbor the power of life and death is in your tongue. If you, if you say it's over, then it's over because the same creative power that was in the mouth of God is now in yes, your mouth. <laughs> Let me hasten on to share with you that before he died, he was scourged. Yeah. You must understand that his suffering was not only on the cross, but before he got to the cross, he was beaten beyond recognition. Hairs were plucked out of his beard. I looked at myself wimping out as I tried to, with a tweezer, pull a hair out of my nostrils. And I didn't, I won't shame myself by telling you that water almost came out of my eye. And I could hear Jesus saying, you wimp, you. and unusual punishment. Death so horrendous until the prophet saw it in advance and said, no other man has suffered like this in humanity. It was so gruesome until Isaiah said, he had no form, no comeliness, no beauty that we should desire him and we hid as it were our faces from him. And so he's beaten beyond recognition and he's bloody. And now after all of that, they assign him a huge wooden cross. The chosen capital punishment of the Roman government. And he travels down a path now known in Jerusalem as Via Dolorosa. Simply interpreted the way of suffering. Mm. And he carries it in pain. He bears it with excruciating anguish. And one Roman soldier looks at what he thinks is the Lord's inability to carry the cross. He don't know who the Lord is. And he pulls on a gentleman by the name of Simon, who was from a place called Cyrene, which was in Libya, which is in northern Africa. He was not African, 
he was Jewish. 300 years prior, 100,000 Jews were exiled to Cyrene. And he is the fruit of those exiles. He's in Jerusalem because he comes to celebrate the feast of Passover. And the Bible says the soldier pulls him, compels him, and forces him to take the cross of Jesus. Jesus was not on Simon's itinerary. Luke said he was coming from somewhere. John says he was on his way somewhere. Either way, the Lord was not on his itinerary. But he ends up with the Lord's cross by what I'd like to call divine interruption. If you don't mind preaching with me for another minute, Look at somebody and tell them, that's how I got here. By divine interruption. Don't you sit here like God did interrupt your stuff, interrupt your mess. You know good and well. You didn't meet him at the altar. You met him at the club. You met him on a high that you couldn't get out of. And you promised him in your drunken stupor, God, if you ever bring me down, I'll never do the, oh, talk to me. I need real folks here. Tell somebody he interrupted my life to save me. I, I had my plans already mapped out. I already knew where I was going, who I was going with, and what I was going to do when I got there. But then came Jesus. And ever since that day, I've been carrying my cross. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for you and me. This consecrated cross, I gladly bear till the Lord shall call me home. I need somebody here that understands what it means to be a cross carrier. Oh God, I come to tell you, when you're a cross carrier, it means you identify with the one whose cross you're carrying. And I come to tell you, just in case you didn't know Elder Velda, uh, that uh, Simon now is associated with Jesus by force. Now, let me tell you quickly, Jesus was not uh, the popular Jesus that you have read about. This is not the Jesus that has fed 5,000 with two fish and five barley loaves, not counting men or women and children. No, no, this is not the one that walked on a water and gave sight to the blind. He has gone, as it were, from being famous to infamy. I tell you, everybody that was running to him is now running away from him. And I come to tell you, you're not true disciples until you can hang out during bad times. Hold on to your seats because it's coming now. I want you to go home. Look through your Rolodex. Oh, I'm dating myself. Uh -uh, I'm sorry. Go through your contacts, if you will, and start deleting some folk because you won't find out everybody that said they were your friends are not. And because when mess goes down and trouble hits and your name is associated with the trouble, you're going to discover then who your real friends are because people who are with you will be willing to be associated with you when everybody else is against you. Y'all can sit there like you want to. You know how we behave. When mess hits, all of a sudden we become neutral. No comment. But 
the devil is a liar. If you love Jesus now, you got to love him when people are dogging him and when people are lying, when people are saying he's not who he said he was. Look at somebody and ask him who's on the Lord's side. By this time, the 12 have hit themselves in fear because they're afraid the same thing is going to happen to them because association brings on assimilation. If they kill him, what do you think they're going to do to us? And so the Bible says they make it to the mountain range called Calvary. One hill in particular called Golgotha. It's known as the place of the skull because the hill was in the same shape of a human skull. And there they lay the cross down and drive into both of his wrists on the left and right hand side. Huge iron spikes. They crisscross his legs and between his feet they fasten it with another huge iron spike. Now let me tell you before they nail him he's already bleeding profusely. His eyes are matted from the blood that pours from his brow after a crown of thorns have been pressed into his skull. He's already convulsing because his flesh has been torn and you don't know where he's bleeding from because there's so many wounds and lacerations so you can't describe exactly where the trouble is. And they would have been all right had they let him lay on the ground. But they made the greatest mistake when they took rope and hoisted the cross up. It wasn't the cross. It was who was on it. And Jesus said, if I and if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. He wouldn't, he wouldn't die when they wanted him to. The rest of us would have been dead before we made it to Calvary. But he was very God and very man. And he told his disciples, don't get it twisted. No man takes my life. I got power to lay it down and watch me pick it up again. I'm looking for the exit now. The Bible says from three o'clock till six o'clock, he dies. Oh, thank you. Oh, wait a minute. How can you say that, sir? You should have said he was dead, but he wasn't dead. He was dying. Oh, thank you. And as he hung, generations were being saved. He died till he saw you accept him. He kept dying till he saw your children accept him. And he would not come down from the cross. But he stayed there until the moon went down in blood. And the sun said, two suns can't shine at the same time. And the sun went into a solar eclipse. The earth said, I'm trying to compose myself. But the earth had an upset stomach and started convulsing. And finally, I heard him say, 
Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There were only five people that were near the cross. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary's sister, Salome. Mary Cleophas' wife. And Mary Magdalene. And the beloved disciple, John. And I heard Jesus say to Mary, his mother, Mother, behold thy son. He turns to John, looking at Mary, saying, Behold your mother. The Bible says he says I thirst. They put vinegar on my God a sponge to a reed and put it to his mouth. The Bible says after they offered him vinegar, he declared I'm done. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, if the Lord said he's done, then we ought to be done too. I got to finish. But tell your neighbor, I'm done. I'm done with poverty. But my God shall supply all of my needs according to his rich and glory. Riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Tell somebody I'm done. I'm done with sickness for he was wounded for our transgressions and with his stripes I'm healed. I'm drawn. I'm done. I'm done with stress for thou will keep them in perfect peace whose minds are stayed on him. Look at somebody and tell them I'm done. I'm done with people. I'm done with haters. I'm done with critics because it don't matter what you say about me as long as he says well done that good and faithful said look at somebody and tell him I told you I'm done did you hear me when it comes to my faith it ain't rare it ain't medium it's well well done look at somebody and tell them neighbor it used to bother me but I'm over it now yes God is so good to me all of my good days outweigh my bad days and I won't I won't complain look at your neighbor and tell them neighbor are you done yet well Jesus looked at the other side of the cross and the Bible says for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross despite in the shame and that's some of y'all problem you can't get past the shame but the way to get past the shame is to ask for forgiveness some of y'all right now would be in a better place relationship would be different but your pride won't let you admit I did a bad bad thing and I'm sorry Lift those hands and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm done. Tell somebody, neighbor, you got to forgive yourself. Because there's some folks that will never 
say I'm sorry but you know what I've done with people that owe me an apology I let them go they don't even know they've been let go you hear me I'm done you ain't gotta never speak to me again I'm done I don't want a chicken wing or a grape from you I've released you to your own folly what you gonna do Rogers this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice and be glad in it look at somebody ask them what are you waiting for you should be celebrating why pastor not because it's Easter it's just another day that the Lord has kept me tell somebody one more time neighbor did you hear the Lord did you hear me I'm done give him praise When you're done, you rise. Hey, I'm going to try it on this side. When you're done, you rise. Mama Shields is gone. We ain't got nobody left to make homemade rolls. But I'm going to let y'all cheat and talk to the Pillsbury Doughboy. Pull that paper off the can. Take a spoon and hit it right in the middle. It's going to pop open. Separate the dough. Put it on a baking sheet. I'm preheat the oven. Around 375, 400. Put him in the oven. How will I know they're done? Tell somebody, because they're going to rise. Yes! And when he said he was done, the next thing he said was father into thy hands I commend my spirit you don't hear nobody you don't hear from Jesus no more until three days later he gets up and says all oh, power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Tell somebody when you're done, you'll rise. And when you rise, you'll have all power. Power to heal your past. Power to survive your future. Touch your neighbor to a neighbor right where I am. God has given me power. So I am the devil's worst nightmare. I'm still here. Give it God the glory. Go ahead. Bury me. But you will see. I'll rise. I'll rise again. Ain't no grave. in me Jesus said what you talking about Mary what you talking about Martha you're looking at what you're looking for you're talking to what you're talking about I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth on me though he were dead Yet shall he live again. Touch your neighbor, tell him, neighbor, you ain't seen nothing yet. Tell him, Jesus was the 
first fruit. But when that trumpet sound, I'm gonna get up out the ground and we'll go sweeping through the city where our loved ones have gone before. We gonna sit down by the banks of the river. Look at somebody and wave. Tell them I won't be back. I won't be back. I won't be back. Give him praise. somebody one time, I'm done worrying. You know what I heard the Holy Ghost say? Tell the church, let the flow have it. Y'all ain't ready for this today. I can tell how you postured. Huh? But tell somebody right through here, your feet ought to start getting light. My God, look at somebody else and tell them, I'm about to let the flow have it. <laughs> For every day I spent in the hospital, I'm going to let the flow have it. For all those nights, my pillow was wet with tears. I'm going to let the flow have it. For all the legal crap, I had to go through. Trace, I'm going to let the flow have it. When they said I wouldn't make it, I'm going to let the flow have it. Look at somebody tell them, give me some room. Because I'm about to let the flow have it. Well, go ahead and let the flow For all of my fears, I'm going to let the flow have it. He has risen. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. Praise him. Praise him. Let me tell you, the conclusion of a thing is the start of something new. Jesus, according to the English language, said three words. It is finished. That's in the English language. But Evangelist Montgomery, in the Greek, it's just one word. And that word is te telesta. One word. Touch the name and tell him what it took three words to say in English. It took one word in the Greek. Telesta simply means paid in full. 
I was going to let y'all go, but I had to get that out. <laughs> Touch your neighbor. Tell him, neighbor, I just want you to know if you haven't danced yet, go ahead and let the floor have it because your debt has been paid in full. Yes. I said it's paid in, it's paid in full, Tiff. I said it's paid in full. I said it's paid it's paid in full. Woo! I said it's paid. Yes. It's over, it's over. It's over, it's over. It's over, it's over. Let the flow have it. Go ahead, Vince. Let the flow have it, son. Let the flow have it. Paid in full. How much I owe for love divine. How much I owe since Christ is mine. Jesus paid it all. to get out of here. Touch your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, since you're done, go ahead and turn the page because a new chapter in your life has just begun. Oh, glory. better bless him, daughter. <laughs> Woo! That's somebody that knows her debt was paid in full. Jesus. Lady Taylor, you remember that conversation we had where I was doing my follow-up pastoral ministry and I said, Lady G, when is your follow-up visit to the doctor that worked on you when you had that aneurysm? She said, Pastor, I don't have no appointment. She said, I'm done. Hey, 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 hey. Look at your neighbor, tell neighbor. If it can happen for G, it can happen for me. No more dialysis. I'm done. Yes. No more pressure pills. I'm done. Yeah. We got to get out of here. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. For everything he's done what he's done 
makes it done for me. You know, it's the new norm. Everybody seems to use social media as an outlet for whatever they're feeling. And I assume today most ministries are going to have something posted. Everybody going to be talking about what happened at church. Well, let's give them something to talk about. What did you get out of church today? Tell somebody, I'm done. That's all you can tell me? I'm done. I'm done with trying to convince you how good God is. Oh my shot. So all I can say is tell somebody it was a wipeout. We can't even express it. We're just done. We're just done. Okay. I promise y'all hold me to my word. This is the last bit of revelation. Because the Holy Ghost would get me if I kept it to myself. In the sixth chapter of Isaiah, he said it was in the year Isaiah died that I saw the Lord, Peggy, seated upon the throne. <laughs> Above it stood seraphims. He was high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. When he saw it, he cried out, Woe is me, for I am. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having a private moment. For I am undone. In the Hebrew etymology, that word undone simply means unraveled at the seams. You ever had a sweater and you pulled and all of it just start to unravel? Tell somebody that's what my life was like before I met Jesus was unraveled at the seed. But when he had met Jesus, he took what was undone and did me all over again. <laughs> Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, what was undone <laughs> is done now. That's why I that's why I can't, I can't leave this service and get into a conversation about sports. I can't leave this service and try to hook up with a boo. I can't leave this service finding out where we're going to eat and what we're going to do somebody if you have really been done you got to bask in your doneness where are my chefs where are my cooks there she is L'Oreal when you have prepared that Chateaubriand steak. You've got that twig.
fig of rosemary with foie gras butter. It's sizzling and everybody's mouth is salivating. But you say something to those who are about to eat that gravely disappoints them because it ain't going to the plate just yet. It's got to it's got to rest. So the juices touch somebody and tell them I ain't got much to say after this service because I got to let this done this rest. I got to I got to let these juices sink in. So when the enemy comes in like a flood on tomorrow and next month I still got juice enough. To look him in the face and say I'm done. Father we thank you for your word. Thank you for those who had a tolerance for it. Even these who had other things on their schedule, but understood it was worth the wait. Bless them, I pray, that they in turn might cause a mass resurrection of lives across this world. In Jesus' mighty name, clap those hands and give him praise. If you don't know the Lord, this is a great time to get to know him. Hey, hey, hey Pastor, no harm, no foul. I, I just came here. You know, it's, it's Easter, and I figured I owe this to my mother. I owe this to my lady. I owe this to my kids. So I'm here, but I ain't, in, I ain't trying to do this, like, not for real. Can I tell you the best time to come to Jesus is when you want to yeah. instead of when you have to. Yeah. Don't wait for that near death experience. I'm telling you that folks are leaving out of here. Yeah. And I mean without the COVID virus. Just folks just leave their homes and never make it back. Stray bullets, car accidents, suicide. And none of us are above any of those scenarios. Seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he's near. If you don't hear anything else this preacher said today, he told me this was a chance of a lifetime that I needed to give myself to God while I want to, before I have to. You don't want deathbed repentance. You don't want jailhouse repentance. Why does something bad have to happen in order for you to serve a good God? Bow your heads, Father. Again, we approach your throne and we pray for those who need salvation today. They know who there are. They are, and our appointment, our assignment is not to embarrass, but to encourage. And so, Lord, we pray that you'd save them. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you with the love of the Lord and seeing you the glory of our King. Thank you so much for your tolerance and your patience. All of our visitors, please come back again. I promise you all. I won't be as lengthy. And I'll do my best to preach better. I know first impressions are lasting impressions, but I want you to know, you know, it wasn't my fault. I let y'all sing and dance. I let the children do their thing. I didn't even call on the choir. And y'all was ready to sing. Sing next Sunday. Cause he'll still be risen. 
And it will still be done. <laughs> don't make me, Peggy, don't make me. Because don't, how many know it don't take much? I stay ready. You, you, you know who I'm talking about. See, y'all, y'all church folk act like y'all don't never, y'all ain't never had a clue of what it was like to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a seed. But you always knew among your friends there was one that was the party animal. It didn't matter where you were. Y'all could be at a car dealership trying to negotiate a deal. And while you're talking, they just, you know, they just, you know what I mean? You know, just, and you be saying, ain't, ain't no music playing. Cause the party is in them. Touch somebody and tell them, I'm the party animal in my group. <laughs> Give me a little space and I'll praise him wherever I am. I'll praise him wherever I can for his love surrounds me like the sea. Jesus. I lift up the name of Jesus for the name of Jesus. Don't start, don't start, don't start. Tell somebody again, it don't take much. Tell a thought will set it off in here. When I said a thought will set it off in here. I'm going to give y'all one thought and we out of here. It could have been another way. Hey! It could have been it could have been another way. It could have been another way. We could be announcing your home going service. It could have been another way. You could be on the sick and shut in list. It could have been another way. It should have been me. Outdoors with no food and no clothes. Left off. Thank you, Jesus. Thank 
you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise him, prophetess. Bless him, Gail. It could have been another way. Sunday before last, and I said, what happened? They said, Pastor, you know that vertigo is a beast, but I didn't see nobody take her out today, because I can hear Marlene saying, I'm done with vertigo. I'm done with sickness. I'm done. God bless you, and thanks for viewing. Would you consider partnering with us with a financial contribution? We have three ways that you can give. Cash app, dollar sign, Kingdom Cathedral VA, or you can go to our website, www.kingdomcathedral.org. And the third way, you can write us, Kingdom Cathedral, 3820 Stone Shore Road, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23452.